بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome back to another episode of The Strangers In this series we have been looking at the hadith in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Islam began as something strange and it will once again return to being something strange in the same way in which it began so give glad tidings to the strangers. And so when Islam began, it began as something small, few followers, who once they abandoned the ways of their people, and they followed their leader, the Prophet ﷺ, and followed the teachings that he was receiving from Allah, and they changed their ways, they were looked at as being, strangers until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Islam to prevail and that strangeness faded away and so once again that strangeness will come back as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us and there's no doubt that today these days in which we are living there is no doubt that we are living in a time when that strangeness has once again returned where every single Muslim who actually adheres to his religion is looked at as being a stranger. Whether it be a Muslim living among non-Muslims or a Muslim living in a Muslim society, among his own brothers and sisters in the religion, brothers and sisters of faith, of deen, even they look at him as being a stranger. Why? Because they are not practicing the religion which he is practicing. They have abandoned the true teachings of Islam. And he is now coming and trying to revive those true teachings of Islam. And so he's looked at as a stranger. And so in the last few episodes, we were going through some important pieces of advice for all those strangers out there in that time of strangeness of Islam. And so, in today's episode, we're going to mention one very important piece of advice for all strangers out there. In order for them to remain steadfast and firm upon this straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for them not to change with the winds, not to be blown to the right or the left, not to become distracted. One important piece of advice, and that is to hold the dunya in contempt and to hold the akhirah as being something significant. And so, for the stranger, the dunya should not mean anything, whereas his eyes should be upon the akhirah. He shouldn't be looking at the dunya and its glitter, its glory. Rather, his eyes should be on what comes after this dunya, death and what follows it. And so, among the greatest pieces of advice for the strangers of today is to keep their minds and hearts focused on the reality of this present dunya, this world that we live in how short and temporary it is, and to always remind themselves of death, the reality of this concept of death, and what follows it, what comes after it, and how the hereafter, the akhirah, is something permanent, in which there is no death. It is forever and ever and ever, whether it be in the abode of paradise, or the abode of the hellfire. And that is simply because the stranger, if he does that, if he keeps his mind focused on that reality, what it will do is that it will make him firm and steadfast and not give up what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for him in exchange 
for giving up the strangeness that he has chosen in this life. And so, the Muslim stranger became a stranger because he read a hadith or he read something in the Qur'an that caused him to wake up. And so, if he was not praying, now he's praying five times a day. And so, when he goes to work, he never used to pray. And so now, he asks his boss, I need to take some time out to pray. His boss will say, what happened to you? When did you start praying? And so he becomes a stranger. Similarly, that Muslim sister who never used to wear hijab, she was heedless, thinking only about the glitter and the glamour of the dunya, wanting men to look at her. And so she woke up one day and she was reminded of the command of Allah in the Qur'an to the believing women to adorn themselves with hijab, to cover their beauty and their adornment. And so she feared Allah and His punishment. And so she started wearing the hijab. And so her own husband says, what happened to you? And so she became a stranger to her own husband. And so this is the reality of the strangers of today. And if they were to remind themselves of the temporary nature of this dunya and what Allah has in store for them in the akhirah, they won't budge from their strangeness. Because a lot of factors will come in play to try to distract them, to tell them to leave this strangeness. Why? Why should I look strange? Why should I grow that beard? I have now grown the beard. Yes, because I know it's important. But now, people are looking at me strangely. I'm looked at as a stranger. Before, I never used to wear hijab. I never used to be looked at as a stranger. Now that I wear my hijab, I cover myself from head to toe. Now I'm looked at as a stranger. Why should I live a strange life? It's not good. And so, a lot of temptations will come to you. A lot of distractions from the people, from your society, from your own family members. And then on top of that, you have shaitan and his whispering. If you were to forget all of that, and remind yourself of the temporary nature of the glitter and the glamour of this dunya, compared to death, that could come at any time, and what comes after it, of either reward or punishment, nothing will distract you. Absolutely nothing will distract you in this dunya. And so becoming attached to the dunya. Becoming attached to the dunya is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us of in the Qur'an. In many, many different places. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ مَتَاعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلُ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى Say to them, O Muhammad, that the dunya is something small something insignificant, something temporary. It is a few days, and then it's all over. As for the akhirah, what does Allah say? وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى And the hereafter, it is better. For who? Not for everyone. No, for those who feared Allah. For those who were always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in so many other places in the Qur'an, Allah explains to us the temporary nature and insignificance of the dunya. And he gives us so many different examples of that. And so the reality is that all of mankind, not just the believers, not just the Muslim strangers, but rather all of mankind are strangers in this dunya. And there is no place for them in this dunya. And there is no home for them in this dunya. Rather, they are strangers in this world. And that is because they were not created for this world. They were created for the Akhirah. And so every single human being, his true home is not in this life. This life is temporary. And that is the reality, the very real and true nature of this dunya. And that's why Allah refers to it as being something small. A small enjoyment. A temporary enjoyment. A few days of enjoyment. And then it's all over. And so don't think that you're going to live a long life. Don't think that you're going to live to 60 or 70 years. You could die today while you're young. But even if 
you live to 60, 70, 80, 90 years, even then, it's a small life compared to the life of the Akhirah. And so how can someone not be a stranger in this life? When the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned to his companion, Ibn Umar, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ سَبِيلٌ Be in this dunya as if you are a stranger or a traveler passing by. A traveler going from point A to point B, he stops and rests on his way. This is how the believer should be in this dunya. As a stranger, he comes to a place, a town, a country, in which he is not from those people. He is looked at as a stranger. Or as a traveler going from point A to point B, he stops to take some rest. He does not take all of his provisions with him. He is going to his real home. That is how the true believers should be and the true strangers should be in this dunya. We'll continue after a short break. the qualities, assure the success. success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative, distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To judge this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mandu Muhammad in Teaching at School every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Before the break, we were speaking about one of the most important pieces of advice for the Muslim stranger in this world today. And that is for him to concentrate and focus on the reality of the nature of this dunya and how small and insignificant it is compared to the akhirah, the final abode compared to the permanent home that we are eventually going to. And so how can one not be a stranger in this life when he will not come off of his means of transportation? He will not come off of his animal when he's traveling or his car or his plane or his ship. He's traveling. He will not come off of it until he becomes 
one of the inhabitants of the graves. That is when his journey finishes. From the time he's born in this life until the time of death. And so, of course, he should be a stranger in this life, in this world. And he should be as if he is a traveler. And so what does a traveler do? He only takes with him what he needs for his travel, for his journey. He doesn't take everything. He does not hoard. He does not buy everything he finds on his travel, on his journey. And so that is how the wise believer is in this dunya. The same way. He lives in this dunya not for the sake of this dunya. And so he's a traveler. He takes of the dunya what he needs. And he leaves the rest. He does not enjoy himself to his fullest in this dunya because he will enjoy himself in the final enjoyment of the akhirah. And so he takes with him of the dunya what he needs and what he does not need. He does not hoard. He does not collect whether it be wealth, whether it be anything of the dunya. And here I wanted to mention a story of one pious and righteous individual. Perhaps he was a scholar who was sitting with a group of believers. And he wanted to basically make them to look at the dunya as being something insignificant. And he wanted to bring their minds to the great significance of the akhirah. So what did he do? He took a leaf of a tree and he placed something very, very insignificant something small and insignificant on that leaf. And so what he did is he took it and he showed it to his companions. He showed it to each one of them. And so they took it, they looked at it and passed it on until all of them saw this leaf and this insignificant thing that was on it. Every single time, every single time that one of them looked at the leaf, he was surprised and astonished, you know, and started to laugh. What is this? What are you trying to show us? And so, after he was finished, and after everyone had looked what was on this leaf, he said to them, this small and insignificant thing that I showed to you was the wing of a fly. It was the wing of a fly. And this dunya, and all its people, its possessions, its desires, its rivers, its lands, is more insignificant to Allah than this filthy wing of a fly. And so, these individuals, this group of believers, they woke up from their heedlessness. And so they said, after that we discovered what he was talking about. And so, we recovered from our heedlessness and we felt a strong blow to our heart which shook our souls and we realized that his intent was to remind us of that hadith, that saying of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, if this dunya was equal in value to the wing of a fly in the sight of Allah, Allah would never have given a sip of water to a disbeliever. And so, it shows us the insignificance of this dunya. And so, when we belittle the wing of a fly, rather when we belittle even a fly itself, and we dislike it because of how unworthy it is, because of how insignificant it is, then it is even more befitting that we do not become over-concerned for the dunya and everything that is in it. Why? Because it is even more insignificant to Allah than that fly. And so we need to look at the dunya as being something insignificant. That does not mean that we abandon the dunya and everything in it. It does not mean that we should not study to make a good earning and get a good job. It does not mean that we should not marry women and have children. It does not mean any of that. As the Prophet 
reminded his companions, those who thought that this is what it meant. And so one of them, he abandoned women. He said, I will never marry women. Another one of them, he said, I will no longer eat food. Another one of them said, I will pray for the night. And so the Prophet ﷺ brought them and said, this is not what I meant. This is not what I mean by abandoning the dunya. Rather, what it means is that it should not enter our hearts. We should not become so attached to the dunya that it distracts us from the reality of this dunya and what follows. Rather, our hearts should be attached to the akhirah and what comes after death. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he advised his companions. He said, visit the graves, the graveyards, the cemeteries. Visit them. Why? Because they remind you of the akhirah. And also we have the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu an. He says, I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among 10 individuals. We were 10. And so a man from the Ansar, he got up and he said, O Messenger of Allah, who are the most clever and determined of people? He said, those who remember death among them, they are the most clever. And those who not only remember death, but those who are prepared for death. Those who are prepared for death, they are the most clever among people. They left with the honor of the dunya and the dignity of the akhirah. And so remind yourself of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every single soul shall taste death. Wake yourself up from your heedlessness. And remind yourself that one day I'm going to die. Remind yourself of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَةٍ Wherever you may be, death will come to you. You cannot flee and escape from death. It will come to you. Even if you are in high, strong buildings and forts. And remind yourself of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say to them that the death that you try to flee from, it will surely come and catch up to you. The angel of death is only outside our door. And when he comes to take away our soul, he is very close to us. When he comes to take away our soul, he will not come knocking on the door. Rather, he will destroy that door and come and take away our souls without our permission. And so, the stranger in the dunya today, the Muslim stranger, he needs to remind himself constantly of this reality, the reality of death. When he does that, everything else will seem insignificant. Everything else in this dunya will become insignificant for him. And so the stranger who decides to adhere to the teachings of Islam, adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, And so he grows his beard, he stays away from haram, he stays away from consuming haram, from eating haram, from consuming haram wealth. Our sisters, they stay away from showing their beauty. They remain modest and they only show their beauty to their husbands. These strangers, nothing will affect them, no matter what it is, when they remember this reality. The insignificance of the dunya and the significance of the akhirah. Why? Because they understand that what is with Allah is far more significant than me abandoning my strangeness simply because it was strange. And so they understand that for me to remain a stranger in this dunya is more pleasing to Allah and the reward of it is waiting for me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he promised them, فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى so give glad tidings to the ghuraba, the strangers. And so some scholars, they said that the meaning of tuba is paradise. Or that it is a tree, a particular tree in paradise, whose width 
is the width of more than 100 years in traveling. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those strangers who earn that reward in the Akhirah and to consider this life as being insignificant and to focus our eyes on the Akhirah and what comes after death. With that, we come to the end of this episode of The Strangers and we will see you all again on another episode of The Strangers. Until then, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh Allah, I'm asking you to make me from those who love you and for those who love you.